I thought that at, it was in February 2015 that at a normal breakaway session that academics do, uh, we decided that we think responsible leadership must be an important theme for us in our mission uh, and the way we do our business. And uh, I am also a trained theologian, and I must say, as I drove here, I thought my prophetic insights were not too bad on this one. Because who would have thought two years later that Brexit would have happened? A myopic nationalistic president would rise in the United States of America. Uh, populistic leaders would stand up against defenseless human beings uh, in Europe. Leaders in the East, specifically Russia, would try to expand their land through uh, war. And neither did we foresee that our own country would have been in a situation of dire, dire need for responsible leadership. And from the beginning, USB was clear on this. We do not use mission and vision statements as shallow marketing tools to sell on websites and on the wall of the director. You either live it or you don't. And there were three levels that we distinguished. And we said, firstly, USB must in itself become an example of responsible leadership with two very important dimensions. Integrity, that means your yes is your yes, and your no is your no, to the inside. And accountability, that means that you put what you do up in the open for scrutiny and good governance so that others can see what you do because things that are in the light are good things. And we took very important measures to sh make sure that University of Stellenbosch, of which we form part, uh, which is a public institution, mostly funded by taxpayers, therefore accountable to the public, that we in our own way of leading within the university becomes a place where people say, you can trust these guys, and they are accountable in what they do. And I must say, contrary to many other departments of the state, we never get qualified audits. We do our job properly. Um, that was the first dimension. But as an educational institution, the second level of this responsible leadership, Mr. Muslantli, was the students that come to us. And I can tell you tonight, we are absolutely privileged. Some of my colleagues are here. We're a graduate school of business. We only work with postgraduate students, the best of the best, 60% of them black and from 36 countries in Africa, who come to us to do things like development finance, the normal MBA, uh, leadership, management coaching, uh, learning how to think ahead into the future to prepare Africa for the disruption of the fourth industrial revolution or whatever the case might be. So we embedded in our curricula not only the intellectual or academic content about what does it mean to be a responsible leader, but in fact take our students through a journey, Mr. Moslantle, where if you enroll with us, we start with self-leadership, a reflection of who am I, organizational leadership, what is required from me to lead an organization in a responsible way. But more than that, through our huge international network, we say we are also global leaders. We must understand that there are some problems in the world that you cannot solve by merely following your own self-interest or even your own national interest. Climate change cannot be solved because you make America great again. It can't work that way. It is something like the, the public good and something like the global good uh, that are important. And that is why we uh, took the decision that tonight we want to honor one of our alumni as an example of the kind of students that, about which we are proud. You know, academics are not paid very well. We, 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 we also don't live by aid. If you have a donation to make tonight to us as well, <laughs> we will happily accept a chair and you can name it in anything. Uh, we'll just take the money and make it work for you. Uh, but, but the point is, it's, 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 it's important for us to recognize that education's greatest pride are our students that leave and then 10, 20, 30 years later you see them 
in leadership positions of great responsibility. Obviously, we're not the only agent of that responsible leadership, but it is an important one. And later this evening, we'll be proud. Uh, Professor Priya Duplessis will do the honor uh, to honor one of our own. It's very important that through our curriculum that we develop the kind of leaders uh, that South Africa, Africa, and the world needs. But lastly, uh, colleagues, we, we also understood a democracy in crisis does require civil society to rise to the occasion. Where I travel in the world and where I speak, people say, oh, you're on your way to be the next Zimbabwe. And I absolutely refuse to accept that. On one thing, because theory of democracy teaches me, the moment if your representative system doesn't work for you, if your normal constitutional balance act doesn't work for you, you rely on civil society to provide leadership, like we did in the 80s, when the space for the free media was closed down, when our leaders were locked because they were seen as terrorists. But then the South African Council of Churches, the UDF, the Treatment Action Campaign later. Today, the, the many foundations that were mentioned by Oscar earlier, the, 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 the most Lantley Foundation as well, our past president himself, stepping into that space. And universities and our job as a business school is to bring rationality and evidence-based debate back into our public discourse. You do not promote democracy by sending tweets. You do it because you think about the hard problems that face this country and how we can solve it. And this is the context for this evening. This is not a marketing gimmick. We're not trying to say, well, let's USB link up with the foundation and see whether what mileage we can get out of it. It's much more serious than that. And when we met with Mr. Moslantle and the colleagues in Johannesburg recently, I found that the most important motivation for this evening. Let us take hands and let us strengthen the space of civil society so that the voice for the foundation of conflict resolution, peace and reconciliation become important. And for us as an educational institution, that rational public debate, whilst we understand the paradigm dependence of our own thinking, that we bring that back so that South Africa can go through a tough time, but maintain a, a deep sense that truth and justice and democracy and freedom shall, in the end, prevail because we're not willing to give up on that ideal.